In this episode of Street Food Journeys Malaysia, we are visiting Kedah up in the northern part of the peninsula of Malaysia. Now, Kedah is known as the rice bowl of Malaysia because of all the rice paddy fields up there, uh, but also it's famous for the resort island of Langkawi. But what about its food? What is it famous for? Let's find out. This episode of Street Food Journeys features Master Chef Malaysia judge and MOMC chef Johari Edrus makes a northern vermicelli soup known as Bihun Soup Utara. The jet lag warriors try Bihun Soup Utara and Rodi Chanai Sarang Burong. Yours truly makes Rodi Chanai Sarang Burong. Ken Abroad eats Gulai Batang Pisang in a river. Shaokani Abbas gives us his rundown on places of interest in Kedah. And our community, including Malaysian diplomats abroad, our MOMC chefs and more, answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Kedah? Where's my chicken? Go, 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 go. Hello, I! Wow, I'm on camera! Welcome to Kedah Darul Aman. A lot of things I want to tell you. A journey culinary to Kedah Darul Aman. Okay, let's sit down. I just got back from Paddy Field. Today is so hot lah. Okay, come. Sit down. Okay, let's talk about Kedah, yeah? Uh, of course, Kedah have lots and lots of uh, hawker's food, yeah? Especially, they make from rice flour because it's, uh, Kedah is a paddy field thing, yeah? And uh, the most popular uh, are Mi Soup Utara or they call it uh, Bihun Soup Utara, yeah? How to prepare them? They use uh, kettle, kettle knuckles, uh, uh, kettle leg, and they take the knuckle meat and the, also the, the, the knees of the kettle and uh, they make a beautiful stock out of it and the condiment, the trimming from the kettle leg, they make it as a condiment and of course they must go with a special chili sauce which is chili powder, vinegar and soya. Ha! And if I go to Kedah, I must look for kuih talam made from rice flour and brown sugar all to die for. So for those people who like to know about Kedah, don't forget to watch this program, okay? And we will bring you all one or two or three or many, many more recipes from Kedah Street Food. Don't forget to watch us. I'm Chef Ismail. Welcome to Kedah Darul Aman. Mm. Award-winning Malaysian tour guide Shaokani Abbas joins us to talk about places of interest in Kedah. Let's hear what he has to say. Chakani, good to see you again. Uh, I have never been to Kedah. Tell me all about it. Well, uh, Kedah is another state in the northern peninsula of uh, Malaysia. It's near the Thai border. But uh, Alustar is the capital of Kedah. And uh, the most attractive part of Kedah in, in Alustar, I mean, is the, the mosque. They call it Zahe Mosque. With its, five, with its five black dome, which is one of the top 10 most beautiful mosques in the world. If you have a good view of Alustar, you should go to Alustar uh, Tower, which is 165 meters high. And uh, away from Alustar, if you want to learn about the ecology of, of Malaysia, you should visit the Bujang Valley. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting site. It's a, there's a museum there too. They are still digging. <laughs> they are still digging there. Or you need to have a cool atmosphere. Atmosphere is very cool. You should drive up to Mount Jerai. It is 1,217 meters and the second uh, highest peak in Kedah. As you know, it talk about food. Kedah is a rice bowl of Malaysia. Yeah? Yeah. They, have, they have a paddy museum. Yeah. Nothing to do with the Irishman, paddy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, and this museum is dedicated to rice plant, paddy, which is the world's most important crop, the jewel of Kedah is Pulau Langkawi or Langkawi Island. Yeah? 
I have been there many, many times and have I have counted the place of interest is 21 place to visit in, in Langkawi. There's a lot to visit wow. in Langkawi. Yeah, either you love it or you hate it, but it's around <laughs> 21 place of interest. And uh, one thing I like about Langkawi is the fabulous beach they have there, among the best in Malaysia. A lot of hotels there along the beachfront. Then we can have, you can do island hopping. Yeah, visit the island hopping, or you spend a day snorkeling or diving at Pulau Paya Marine Park. Yeah, you can okay. find you can you can swim among the the the, the fishes there with turtles, yeah, everything. And the nature attraction of La Langkawi is the mangrove river cruise. It's a boat cruise through Langkawi Gyo Park Forest Reserve. It's, it's fantastic there. Right, these are the things we can uh, can do in Kedah. Okay, okay. Fantastic. I never realized that much. There was that much to do in Kuta. I always thought it was just Langkawi. You spend a few days at the resort and that's it, you know, but oh, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, that, yeah, that's why people uh, don't look at Alusta, they go for Langkawi. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll have to check it out. Well, thank you yeah. again so much, uh, Shaopani. We'll talk to you All again right. next destination. Okay, okay. ciao. Well. <laughs> Hello, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Hi, my name is Salsa Villa, and this is my son, Nawal. We are from <laughs> the Netherlands. Okay, when we think of Kedah, I would think of one dish called the Empeng Badi, served with freshly grated coconut and palm sugar. Yummy! Bye! MasterChef Malaysia Judge Johari Edris is a founding member of Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and a native of Kedah. He visits a market to shop for ingredients for famous Kedah dish Bihun Sup Utara and shows us how to make it. Okay, today I'm at the market. I'm looking for something for my cooking today. Here is the uh, local butcher. I will get some uh, item from there. Let's go. Bang, dah berapa lama dah dah meniaga daging ni? Ada nak kakaknya. Ya. Lebih daripada 20 tahun. Ah, 20 tahun dah kasih alam saya pun kenal kenal. Okay, now I'm the uh, the grocery store to see some some dry item, uh, spice and herbs for my cooking up to it. Guys, I already purchased all the items that I'm going to cook today. So come, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, guys, just to begin, what we need here is the beef bone, and of course there's some meat by the side. Uh, remove all those uh, the uh, the silver skin, and then uh, you can cut into a slightly uh, smaller piece. Yeah. Okay. okay here we have the uh, bones. Yeah. The meat inside here, the garlic and onion. All we put it all together. And the powder, uh, cumin powder, uh, black pepper powder. We call it uh, in Malaysia is paskawan or four friend. Uh, actually, it is uh, cinnamon. You have cardamom, you have uh, star anise, and also a clove. Yeah, just to give more spice to this thing. We call it a uh, soup bonjol. Contain all those things that here, just to give for more flavor. Chinese parsley, this part. Yeah, and this one we keep for the garnish later on. And of course, the same for the. Um, for the spring onion, also the same. We just take the bottom part, and there you are. Everything there. Lemon grass. So what you do, you just you throw, and we put it here. Add up water. As you can see, we just fill up just to cover the bone and the meat, and we let it boil until it becomes soft. It will take about one or two hours. Okay. Next, what you need to do is just boil the water, and you add the turmeric powder. Vermicelli, yeah. You just boil the vermicelli until it. Later on, the vermicelli will soak all those yellow color. Okay, now you can see the uh, vermicelli already soft. There are two ways to do it. You can first soak your vermicelli uh, for a couple of hours, or you can do the way that I'm doing now. 
actually I'm boiling it. We're going to pass it through the cold water so so you can cool and wait for until serving time. Pass through the cold water. Noodle will not be continue cooking. Next one is the red sauce, sauce mira, cooking oil. We have cooking oil, the um, pounded garlic and onion, saute until it become nice and uh, fragrant. The chili, chili paste, uh, chili sauce, chili powder, the uh, tamarind juice, some sugar. Then the sauce should be slightly on the sweet part. Add a bit uh, slightly water. Okay guys, you can see now the soup are bubbling and the beef are already soft. It's already about uh, two and a half hours uh, been boiling here. The uh, pickle radish to soak in the hot water for a couple of minutes just to release all the saltiness of this uh, the, uh, the radish. So what you do, you just cut it uh, celery, cut half the dish to hold it from the. Uh, okay, now the uh, spring onion. Okay, next one of course the beef, so soft. Okay, now you can see the soup bubbling hot. You can see the bowl, yeah. So now we are ready for serving. So we just take a handful of noodles. So we put it aside here in the bowl. And then what we do, we have this uh, beef earlier that we cut. The salted radish. We have the celery, spring onion. Top up with the soup or the broth. It's worth waiting for a few hours for this lovely um, soup yeah now next what we do we have this lime for the garnish lime here fresh shallot the sambal mera to be by the side wow okay guys that is mihun soup utara the most delicious the most yummy and the most flavorful dish in Kedah. you got to try it and you got to try this recipe here is another uh, Mihun Soup Utara stall here. So you can see a lot of things there. This is the tribe, noodles, the um, meats and so on here. As you can see here, they have a big pot with a pool of stocks and it is uh, for the meats. Uh, uh, we soup utara, okay? as you can see, uh, there's a lot of those meat, uh, there's a sauce here, let's try. Mm. Spicy and sweet. Very good. Don't forget to subscribe to MOMC for more recipes and future MOMC TV. So until next time, see you guys, jumpa lagi. Hello, uh, Masters of Malaysian Cuisine. Uh, I'm Said Wafa from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, when I think of Kedah, uh, I think of my past when I was uh, studying in Embarasan Perlis. So I'm not sure if it's a Kedah Perlis thing, but I miss having uh, Laksa Kedah or Mee Kuah uh, of the North. So do let me know. Canadian couple, the Jet Lag Warriors, visited Kedah during their year-long stay in Malaysia. They had the opportunity to try different Kedah dishes including Bihun Suputara and Roti Canai Sarang Burung, a roti shaped like a bird's nest. Let's find out what they thought. Stopping in for some local specialties, Bihun Soup and Nasi Daging. What could be better than that? So everywhere you look, good food in Malaysia. What can you say? So stay tuned guys. I'm telling you, the best food in Malaysia, 
is always at a place like this where there's a roof and no walls. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no walls in the building and it's full of locals, that's the best food you're gonna that's get. That's Actually, to level this place up, if the vertical pillars are made out of sticks, <laughs> those are the best places to get food. Yes. Roadside, no walls, local eats. That's true, and we're about to try nasi daging and bihun soup, two of the most recommended food by you guys in Kedah. So. Kedah specialties, I'm hungry. Very excited to And try. I'm excited because of the uh, structure here, I know the food's good. <laughs> bihun soup daging. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this chili, not even taste it, not even test it, and just dump it in. Could be regrettable, we'll see. Looks really good. Look at all the meat, by the way. Full of meat, you got bihun in there. Smells incredible. This wow. is comfort food. Wow, this is good. I'm already Ooh, thinking this is very so good. good. It smells very good. Mm -hmm. Wow, how's it? Uh, very spicy. <laughs> Because you dumped the whole thing, mm. the whole chili. It's really good. It reminds me of, oh, you know what it reminds me of? Oh, it's so good. It reminds me of the soup parut in Santa Mera. Oh, yeah. The greatest restaurant in all of Malaysia. Kampung Orang Warung. Yeah, Warung Orang Kampung. Uh, restaurant village people. This is really good. The meat is really good, too. Mm. The chili is questionable. That many chilies. But special thanks to everybody recommending this. This is good. This is comfort Ooh. food. If you're ever feeling homesick or lonely or, you know, after a bad breakup, you come for some hot <laughs> and spicy bihun soup. Not ice cream. No. In Malaysia, you go for this. Good morning, everybody. Here we are in Kadah. Now check this out. This is not your average roti chanai. It starts off similar to what you might expect. And then you see him making these rings with the roti. <laughs> and then the eggs come out. Look at this, it's called bird nest roti. Come on, pretty special. And then he tops it off with dagging and potato curry. Oh, I am excited so to try this. Wow, look at that. <sighs> I'm ready to try, look at this. Go for it, Ivana. Oh, I think the roti chana is just a regular roti chana with eggs. So let me get a big piece. Let me get this really oh, beautiful look looking the egg. Half boiled, half cooked, I mean. Oh, wow. With some meat and potatoes <laughs> and some down soup. There you have oh, that's it. An, that's a breakfast right there. Mmm. <laughs> The best kind of roti chanai. Really? Mm -hmm. You would say it's better than normal roti chanai? Mm -hmm. Wow. The best. That's really saying something because roti chanai is pretty good. Mm. Really good. I almost thought it looks like a Spanish breakfast, but it's Malaysian. Malaysian. Really nice. Just when you thought you've eaten it all, they Even bring out roti yeah. chanai bird nest. It's like dugging in a curry soup and the curry is really nice too, not too spicy. Very tasty. Awesome. Okay, Five hungry. stars. Five stars. Good one, everyone. Look at this, guys. Look at the eggs still jiggling in there. Half cooked. The perfect level of cookedness. I think I think the guy cooking it, I think he's done this before. He did a masterful so. job. Now, I feel like roti chanai is finger food, but I'm going to use fork and knife because this is a sloppy one. Yeah. This one is a messy one, so oh, fork and knife. Oh, so good. Oh, the... The egg is just perfectly cooked. <laughs> the egg is perfectly cooked. And you love the runny egg. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. 
I guess you're gonna make one whole video about Kira food. The best, right? Amazing that they have improved Rudy tonight. Better. That's Cannot why it's so fire. Cannot believe it. It's viral. Um, I should... could go for one more of this. I'm not sure if we're gonna have Honestly, time. Honestly, if I open a restaurant in Canada, this would be on the it menu. It has to be. It's so good, guys. It's warm. It's delicious. You got meat. You got potato. You got runny egg, and you got roti chennai, and it it's just amazing. Hi, my name is Didi and I'm originally from Penang, but I lived in Kedah for several years. Um, the first one is Pekasam, um, deep fried and eaten simply with just white rice. It's fantastic. And the next one is Pau Sambal Bilis, which are fried buns and they're stuffed with spicy anchovies and just freshly sliced cucumbers. The third is probably, um, I would say my favorite is Kue Dangai and they are these unique shaped morsels. They're made with sticky rice flour and grated coconut and the taste of toasty coconut on the outside of it will just captivate you. And the last one that I would share is Kue Peneram. It's these little mini donut shaped Kue that are made from rice flour and brown sugar and the, it tastes like these little insanely delicious nuggets of brown molasses. So these are a few things that I really love eating while I was in Kedah. Thank you! I was intrigued by the roti chanai sarang burung or bird's nest roti chanai that the jet lag warriors tried in Kedah, so I decided to make it. Here's my version of roti chanai sarang burung. Hi guys, so what we're going to do is make the uh, the bird's nest roti chanai. First of all, we need to make the roti chanai, the bread itself, okay, uh, or, or the dough at least anyway. So this is what you want to do. Uh, just pretend this is a dough mixer. You can uh, just using a thermomix, but obviously any dough mixer, or you can even knead this by hand. I've got some flour in here. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, and I'm going to add a little bit of ghee or even just oil, and I'm going to add a little bit of condensed milk, or you can use sugar, or you can leave it out altogether. We're going to add some water, and then we're just going to knead this. I'm going to knead this for 3 minutes, let it rest for 5 minutes, and knead it again for 3 minutes, okay? Okay, so the dough has kneaded for 3 minutes on, 5 minutes off, and 3 minutes on again, so a total of 6 minutes of kneading. This is what it looks like now. What we want to do is to make them into dough balls, okay? So I want a dough that's pretty soft and easy to handle. And for this here, I'm going to divide it into four portions. And then, with each of them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tuck them in, okay? Let's get rid of all the creases. That's what I get here. And do the same with the others. Okay, now I want to grease them. And you can use oil, you can use butter, you can use ghee. And I'm using ghee here. Coat it generously. And then you're going to let it rest for at least a couple of hours at room temperature. If it's winter, like here it is, like it is here in Australia, just let it rest for a bit longer or stick it in like a at a bread proofing temperature, okay, in your oven so that it doesn't get cold and get hard, okay? Rest for at least two hours and then we'll come back to it. So I've got the dough ready and I got some eggs and I've got some ghee and we're going to flip the dough and then we're gonna uh, cook it up with the uh, eggs in the middle and top it up with some curry that I've got as well that I'm going to add to it. Okay, let's have a go. So here's the dough and you want to flatten it and flip it. Okay, it's quite firm because it's cold. I prefer to work it when it's at room temperature or tropical room temperature. It just means it's a little bit harder to flip, okay? So to flip it, you want to flatten it and thin down in particular the edges, okay? So let's do this. And you just want to do a figure eight and flip and stretch and flip and stretch. And you just keep doing it till it's really, really thin. 
Now, if you're having trouble flipping it, you can just stretch it by hand. Okay, so again, really, really thin. And now, usually I would just fold it up and cook it, okay? But you want to make it into a rope this time around. I'm going to stick lots of ghee around it. Fold it up into a rope okay and then we're gonna turn it into a circle let's cook it up and let's just turn this on and get this nice and hot let's add some ghee to this okay so we're gonna cook this on low to medium heat and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a lid on it just so that it can cook evenly okay because there's so many layers with the rope you want to make sure that they cook through properly and they don't end up burning on the bottom but still be raw in the middle you know and let's have a look oh. just gonna add a little bit more ghee so help it along Let's crack the eggs in. We're going to cook it on low heat so it doesn't burn on the bottom too easily. And I've got some curry here that I made previously. This is a lamb and potato curry, but it's drier than the version that you saw in the video, okay? Okay, cool. Let's show in the curry. I don't go too crazy with it. Just cover it to finish it off. A bit more ghee. Break it up. There you go. Enjoy. Malaysian diplomats Cairo Tazril, the Chaje Dafe to Serbia, and Kartini Tajo, the education attaché to Australia, tell us about their favorite Kedah dishes. Dobar dan. Greetings from Belgrade, Serbia. Thanks, Jackie, for having me. Well, uh, when I think of Kedah, a place where I frequently go back to because uh, my dad is from Kedah, first thing first is Laksa Kedah. You can get anywhere in Kedah Laksa Kedah, but the one that I always look forward to when I go back to Kedah is the one prepared by my family back in Kedah. Uh, next in the list would be Chok Penram, you know, or Telinga Hindu. It is made of uh, tepung beras and gula merah. Uh, again, you can get anywhere in Kedah, but uh, the one that I like the most is the one prepared by my uncle's family. Uh, then, uh, Baulu. Kui Baulu that you can easily get from Pasar Pekan Rabu. And last but not least is pekasam. It is fish or beef. Well, it's the best. It's always pembuka uh, selera makan dengan nasi panas. Well, I think that's all. Ciao. Hi, I am Katini Tajul, Education Attache at Consulate of Malaysia, Sydney. I am originally from Sungai Petani, Kedah. Saya asal orang Kedah, orang Sungai Petani. Bahabak semua orang Kedah. My favourite food from Kedah. 
Okey, yang pertama saya suka pulut nyok makan dengan ikan kering. The first dish that I uh, love the steamed glutinous rice, I will have that with um, desiccated coconut and uh, fried dried fish. Saya suka juga kalau menyorok pagi tu saya suka pek nga makan dengan gulai ikan. My second favorite dish, uh, like a savory pancake. I love to have the pancake uh, with fish curry. Okay, semua saya ada pesanan untuk semua, uh, especially orang-orang kedah. Uh, jaga diri, stay at home, duduk rumah. Kalau tak perlu, jangan hmm, keluar. InsyaAllah, semoga semua dipermudahkan. Thank you. Bye. Full-time German traveller Ken Abroad was invited to try a famous Kedah dish, Gulai Batang Pisang or Banana Stem Curry, at a lunch set in a river. Let's check in on his experience. You probably had a dinner before by the river, but did you ever had a dinner in the river? That is what we are going to do here now. So you can see they are sitting inside the river. Hello! Apa kaba? Bye! <laughs> All right, enjoy your meal. <laughs> so we are going to do the same here now. We are still on the trip with the Kedah Tourism Office. We are somewhere deep inside Kedah, Kedah State. And yeah, we are going to have the same here now. Let's see how that is. Okay. This is our menu today. Special menu for you. We have, uh, this one is, we call that a gulai batang pisang. Banana flower. Stock. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where you cook it in? <laughs> yes. You cook yes. it in a banana stock. Together with meat. No, I think it is banana stock. You're going to eat banana stock. Oh, but we're not, eating, beef, right? we're not eating bananas. No, There's no banana beef. pieces inside. I don't think so. Okay. okay. Well, but I'm excited. It looks pretty good. This one? Okay. Huh? Oh. This is a very uh, popular uh, here. Okay, okay. This menu. All right. I'm finished with my plate, which I'm going to show you fully when I made it down there. I forgot the names already. So what was this with pisang? Pisang. Gulai daging batang pisang. Gulai daging batang pisang. You want pakasam? Pakasam. What is pakasam? Pakasam. The fermented fish from Kedah. Oh, the fermented fish. Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tried that at the, the Raya Hotel. All right. I first gonna try the beef. Do we have bones in the beef? No. No bones. No bones. Okay, that makes it easier to eat. Oh, it's super soft. Super soft. Wow. Oh, by the way, I'm the only one here eating with with a fork. Everybody else is eating with their hands. Oh, maybe I should do that too. But okay. Mm. Mm. Wow. The beef is a good start. <laughs> <laughs> mm, wow. I mean, isn't this beautiful here? Look at the scenery behind us. Like, uh, is it like in the middle of the jungle kind of thing here? I mean, it's not deep in the jungle, but it's the jungle around us. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have kids playing over there. The sun is shining. What an awesome place to have lunch. Mm. Wow. Oh, this is awesome. What is this again? Um, banana stock. It's a banana stock. Yeah. Wow, this is really nice. Wow. Mm. Okay, so all in all, really nice meal. We're going to enjoy this now. Everybody happy? Yes. yes. Sit up. Sit up. Yeah. All right, Makan is finished. And now the hands were pretty oily, but he just showed us a nice technique how to get rid of the oil on the hands. Okay, just grab some of the hand and rub it to your hand. And the oil gonna come out from your hand. Oh, yeah, the same technique that they use in the in the workshop. Yeah. When they are oil spill, they put the sand on it. Yeah, so that actually worked. So we just took some sand here and rub it. Oh, works, right? Yeah. Pretty good. Our MOMC chefs Bob Atnan and Rene Jufri and MOMC at Hearts, Su Wen Ui, answer the question, what dishes do you think of when you think of Kedah? Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Mm, we're talking about Kedah food. Definitely in my mind straight away, uh, we think about Laksa Kedah. 
where to get the laksa kedah at the laksa uh, teluk kecai and jalan uh, if i'm not mistaken jalan ahmad abdullah or something like that oh so they have uh, uh, laksa kedah there they serve with one pieces of uh, fish wah oh, very nice one that one you have need to find it when you uh, go to kedah darul aman and then also definitely uh, just three days ago i just having uh, bihun soup utara and also last one definitely ikan pekasam Ah, ikan pekasam di sana is very special. Uh, we made from a fresh water uh, uh, fish, uh, so we marinate them, we fermented them uh, about, about a week with the rice and then also salt and then also dry uh, uh, tamarind, served with uh, steamed hot rice. Wonderful, kedah. Don't forget. Hi, Rene Johari here. So today we'll be talking about. The destination called Rice Bowl of Malaysia, Kedah in the north. Okay, so all the rice throughout Malaysia comes from Kedah. Okay, so uh, I would say the least of my favorite uh, that I would like to share with you when I talk about Kedah, uh, most of it are using rice-based ingredients. So the first on the list would be Laksa Kedah. Okay, Laksa Kedah, it's uh, very known uh, when you talk about Kedah where the noodle is prepared from rice, rice base. Then second on the list will be ikan pekasam or pekasam fish. So this fish is fermented using rice. So talking about rice bowl of Malaysia, they really make use of their local produce. So next on the list will be dodol. Dodol is my personal favorite and obviously people from north, from Kedah, they really really talk uh, about dodol. Then you have also kueh karas. Okay, kueh karas is a tea time favorite in the north in Kedah that everyone must try. Then you also have tapai. Tapai, I would say, is a must try if you talk about Kedah. Also using their local produce, which is their glutinous rice. It's a fermented glutinous rice. Then a savory dish that always near to my heart when I talk about Kedah will be gulai nangka or uh, jackfruit curry so those all are the list that I can share with you today uh, regards to Kedah favorites Apa khabar? Tatia Hao Saya Su and Ui I'm from Melbourne with love When I think about Kedah food I think about Nasi Kanda number one best in the whole wide world Laksa Kedah mmm sedap When you think about Chinese food you go to the Esplanade which is called Hai Tao Ki which is near the Kedah River. You get Cha Kui Tiao, you've got Kon Lo Mi, you've got Ying Yong, you've got Popia, you've got Oyster Omelette, and the whole works in one whole building. So it's the street food. You're talking about street food. Love you all. Miss you, Kedah. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little virtual tour of Kedah and its food. Don't forget to tune in next week for the last in this series. This time we're visiting Borneo and the state of Sarawak. I look forward to your company then. Have a great week ahead. I'm Jackie M.